Fillers, Rich. Fillers, we've got all fair. It's been around for ages. Everybody used pink all fair everywhere. It's uh, it's the stalwart of the of the yachting industry. Um, and we've got something new out. Uh, what we got? Well, we've got a new a new filler, um, FL Flex Light. Um, this is something that's been developed. So let's well, let's go backwards a little bit. Let's talk about the marine industry. If we look at the marine industry, 20, 30 years ago, a 30 meter was a big boat. And um, what's happened is generally boats have got bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're into this new world of mega yachts. And there's a couple of things with filler. The more filler you put on, the more weight you're putting to the boat. So there was a consideration of weight and then there was a consideration of strength and flexibility. Now, the bigger the boats get, the more they pant and flex and move uh, torsionally, whether it's with heat or with the conditions they're being used. So we've re-engineered and looked at our fillers and we've come up with this product, which actually has a fibre reinforcement in there as well. But more importantly, I think, um, is in the name it's light so if i talk about if i can be a nerd for just a minute in specific gravity the specific gravity of of the product that we all know and love all fair lw is is 0.91 whereas the flex light is 0.68 so it's a it's a lot lot lighter sorry let me just get that right so um all fair uh, all, standard all fair you're looking at something if you put a liter of filler down you're looking at you're looking at you're looking at about 900 grams but if you put a liter of this down you're looking at about 600 grams yeah it's a good way to visualize it it, it is it is significantly lighter and of course what effect does that have well it really it can be as much as um fuel consumption on big vessels all those sort of things so th there's a real consideration by owners now on what products they're using and the point of all of this is that we're able to give choice and there's a lot of manufacturers out there now using the filler is the 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 sort of architecture of the boat so you know we were struggling with our fillers being used in shaping it's not what it's meant for it's meant as a a fairing sort of compound to make it smooth so we've had to adapt and change our products to suit the sort of market that we're in. OK, so I mean, Chris and I come from the race boat world traditionally and, and, uh, uh, um, and uh, we, we, we're, waste saving is a massive thing on there. So can you see this product being used for race boats? Yeah, I mean, definitely it's, you know, maybe it's a market we we uh, have. Well, we've considered it, obviously, but it was initially designed for weight loss for the super yachts because of the amount of product. But for sure, you know, I think if we had this product leading into the Volvo race a few years ago, it would have been something they'd love to have skimmed the vessels in uh, just to keep that weight down. So definitely a contender, Simon, in the future, I'm sure. Now, interesting, a couple of things there that you, we're, we're, you know, we're not the first to bring out a lightweight filler. There are other lightweight fillers on the market. Now, we've always been cautious with them. We have some in our other own ranges in, in AXO, for instance, but we've always been cautious with them because uh, for two reasons. First of all, strength. You know, the more the more stuff, the more filler you put in, the lighter it gets, but the less resin that's there. So strength is an issue. And the other thing we've always worried about is 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 solvent entrapment. So the, the, the less resin that's there, we have to be careful not putting too many solvents over the top because they can suck in. How, how have you dealt with those two issues with with FL? Well, there's there's the resin technology would be one. Um, but there's also the element that you you may need a surfacing filler over the top just to seal it. So how can I differentiate a surfacing filler? Well, if you you imagine a fairing compound has microspheres within it to make it a packer. So any of you out there sort of listening into this, if you're from the um, GRP world, this is like Cabasil in GRP. It's used as a, a packer to make the product have more uh, thickness and density. And so you have this in all of these fillers, but the surfaces are just a resin in themselves just to seal it, which is just a, a very, very thin screed basically to seal it down to stop that porosity because it, it acts like a sponge. Uh, yeah, not all. Sorry, sorry. Rich, as I say, how have you how have you dealt with the strength thing, though? Because we know that the lower density fillers are strength. I mean, you've got something that's lighter and more flexible um is you, you the, the, is it just the resin that creates the strength well no we've got a fiber reinforcement in there obviously you know it would be uh commercial suicide for me to tell you exactly how it's made i'm not going to do <laughs> yeah, that but sorry, i can Richard. i can i can tell you that it's it's got um you know a fiber in there 
And this is what gives us, it helps sort of interlock and, and makes it stronger. And, you know, that helps us with the how the product works and moves. But the key factor is fibre reinforcement and the weight, I think, for this one. Um, we were just talking about um, the, the the surface filler. I mean, we there's been a surface filler, the old one for, for those 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 stalwarts of the all grip the guys that are listening. The old one was uh, standard E and all grip uh, surfacing compounds been out for a few years now. Still relatively new product in, in, in the terms of all grip. But uh, um, you're saying, you, you know, it's, it's definitely wise to use this over the over the FL. Yeah, definitely wise to use it for sure. Um, if you're talking about LW, the one that we all know and love it, you don't have to put it over LW. But the, I think the point to make in all of this, Simon, is it's a bit, it's an English saying, but it's a bit sort of belts and braces. If you've got a porous product there, having a product to seal it down, to lock it in before you put the high solvented products over the top helps you. What you don't want is those solvents from the, the high build, the ultra build, whatever you're putting on there, soaking into the system. Uh, we have a little bit more sort of solvent resilience with LW maybe than uh, FL, which is why we recommend um, definitely having a, a skim over the top. Mm. But it, it really is. It's all about stopping that migration of solvents the wrong way. We want it dissolving and going out rather than being sucked into the underlying coatings. So the, the, the clever chemists at your lot have ma managed to find out, make a, a, a filler that's lighter weight, flexible and, and, and still keeping the strength, which sounds quite exciting. Worth uh, making a point here, Richard, is that this product is really very new. It has been launched, but is not available in Europe at the moment. We're waiting for supply, I think, in September uh, is, is, uh, is when we're coming in. So just before everyone gets on the phone and tries to order it, we actually haven't got that in stock at Marineware yet. It's on its way. So uh, um, about the time we can hopefully we'll be able to be a little bit more free free round with the with situation we're in at the moment we'll have some all fair fl any other point any other points we want to make on that one rich or should we go to chris for some questions on it let's i love questions let's do chris and questions all right then chris what you got for us right uh, a, a couple rich is going to love both of these uh the <laughs> first one is uh as, as you said that the fl is a little bit more little bit more flexible um, would this make it better for using on wooden boats which move a lot? Oh, Chris, Chris, we're going back now, back in time. So we're going, we're going to, we're going to talk about Noah's Ark a little bit. I mean, I, I guess the flexibility and the strength lends itself to uh, those sort of substrates. So GRP that maybe moves after a period of time or, or becomes soft over years, repairing with FL would be a really good sort of opportunity. So yeah, I think for, substrates that are a little less stable where you need a little bit of flexibility but some strength in there as well then it could be a good fit probably need to do some trials on that okay chris what uh, else we got and the, the other the other question that a couple of people have asked uh can fl be used below the waterline uh airing ratio keels it, it's one of those things it's it's not just about the product it's what you put over it to seal it down it's all, always going to be recommended not to have it sort of below waterline we we know you can fare in up to sort of a meter um but we have we have below waterline sort of fillers for that job it's it's about the right product for the right job chris and that's why in the confusing world of, of all grip and international there are so many products Probably don't need so much of the weight saving characteristics below the waterline either if we're, if we're sticking to a keel, I suppose. But, I was uh, just going to yeah. say, it's also buoyant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want it flipping upside down. <laughs> uh, cool, that's good for now, guys. Okay, thank you very much.